Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you've probably noticed that my go-to low carb flour is coconut flour. Coconut flour, in my opinion, has the closest texture to traditional flour, plus it has an excellent taste, in my opinion. However, the downside of making coconut flour buns and coconut flour bread products is that you normally have to use a lot of eggs to get the structure and the texture that you want for a sturdy loaf of bread or sturdy bread buns. And as a result, your buns and your bread can have a slight eggy taste to them, which for me, I'm used to it, so it doesn't bother me. To me, it's not an overpowering egg taste, but not everybody likes that slight egg taste to their bread products. And if you're vegan or you have an egg allergy or you're just wanting to cut down on your animal fats, then coconut flour bread and bread products you would think would be a big no-go. But today I want to share with you a couple very simple recipes of coconut flour bread buns and coconut flour bread without the use of eggs. They're super easy and they have a great taste and a great texture. And if you want printable versions of these, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find printable versions of these and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you wanna see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you could be notified every time I put out new videos on every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some Amazon affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those Amazon affiliate links, a small portion of whatever you purchase will go to me and will help to support the channel. So. Anytime you want to purchase anything on Amazon, make sure you use my affiliate link and a small portion of your purchase will go to help support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Lightly spray two to three four inch diameter hamburger bun molds with cooking spray. Silicone ones are the best to use. I'll put a link in the description for the ones that I use. In a medium mixing bowl, combine a half cup of coconut flour, two tablespoons of psyllium husk powder, a fourth teaspoon of salt, and a half tablespoon of baking powder. Sift or whisk these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add a fourth cup of butter that's been melted and cooled, or if you're wanting to keep this vegan, you can use coconut oil. And three-fourths cup of warm water. Make sure it is warm. This helps the dough to be softer, which helps it to mix better, which results in a fluffier, smoother bread. Whisk these all together until everything is fully combined. Once it is fully combined, Whisk it vigorously for about another 30 seconds. This is just to create some air in the dough, which helps for the buns to be a little more fluffy. Once it's all whisked together and you have a smooth dough, press the dough all together into a ball and massage it in your hands for about a minute just to make sure that everything is fully combined and everything is sticking together well. You should have a moist dough, but it should not be sticky. Once you've massaged it for that extra minute, press the dough back together into a ball and place it back into your mixing bowl. Then allow it to rest uncovered at room temperature for about 10 minutes so that the dough can absorb any extra moisture and so the psyllium husk can start binding with the coconut flour so you have a dough that stays together well after it is baked. Once it's rested for 10 minutes, then massage the dough a little bit more in your hands just to make sure that the moisture has been absorbed a little bit. You still should feel some moisture in your dough, but again, it should not be sticky at all. Then divide the dough into two to three equal portions, depending on how big you want to make your buns. I'm making mine in four inch diameter molds, so it only makes two. If you're making them in any smaller molds, you'll probably be able to get three out of this. You can always double this recipe if you want more than just two. Then press the dough evenly into your bread molds. Try to make these as even as possible. If you're wanting these to be more of a circular top, like traditional hamburger buns are, then roll each portion into a ball 
and flatten it into a disc shape so that the top of each portion has a slight dome to it. This dough doesn't do a whole lot of spreading. It does puff up, but it does not spread. So basically, however you shape the top of your buns, that's how it's going to come out looking. So if you just leave it with a flat top, it's just going to be flat and, and look pretty much like an English muffin more than anything else. Which, you know, doesn't really matter as far as taste-wise. It still tastes the same, but if you're wanting that traditional hamburger bun look, that, that little mound on top, then you will need to shape it into a disc rather than just pressing it into the mold. Then place it in your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or until a tester comes out clean. Once it's done baking, remove it from the oven. They still will be slightly soft, but they will firm up as they cool. Allow them to cool in the molds for about 10 minutes or until they're firm enough to remove from the molds without falling apart. Once they've cooled, transfer them to a wire rack and allow them to cool completely before slicing them. Once they've cooled completely, slice them in half horizontally, place your favorite fillings on them, and eat and enjoy. If you're wanting to make this into a loaf of bread, then preheat your oven to 400 degrees and line an eight by four inch loaf pan with parchment paper. Allow the paper to overhang on the side so you can use it as handles once the bread is done baking. In a large mixer bowl, combine one cup of coconut flour, a fourth cup of psyllium husk powder, a half teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of baking powder. Sift or whisk these ingredients all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add a half cup of butter that's been melted and cooled, or if you're wanting to keep this vegan, you can use coconut oil and one and a half cups of warm water. Again, make sure this is warm. It helps your dough to come together a lot more smooth, which results in a fluffier bread. Beat on low for about 10 seconds or just to get the dry ingredients moist. Then increase your speed to medium low and beat on medium low for about 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined. You can use a hand mixer or a wooden spoon to mix this all together also. It just takes a little bit more elbow grease if you use a wooden spoon, but it still can be done with no problem. Once it's all mixed together, scrape down the sides of the bowl and push all the dough to the center of the bowl. Press the dough into a firm ball, then massage the ball in your hands for about a minute or so just to make sure that everything is fully combined and that the texture of your dough is smooth but not sticky. Then place it back into the mixer bowl and allow it to sit uncovered at room temperature for about 10 minutes so it can absorb any extra moisture. Once it's sat for 10 minutes, massage it in your hands just for a couple seconds just again to make sure that everything is sticking together and that you have a smooth slightly moist dough. Then place your dough onto a clean work surface and roll the dough into about a six inch long oval. Place the oval into the center of your prepared loaf pan. Then bake the bread in your 400 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes or until it's lightly golden on the outside and the tester comes out clean. Now I will give you a heads up about this bread. It makes what I call tiny bread. It is not going to be your traditional size of a bread loaf. The bad thing about coconut flour when you use it, no matter what you do to it, it really doesn't rise. Even if you add yeast and gluten and everything else to it, it really doesn't rise a whole lot. So it will fluff up a little bit, it will rise a tiny bit, but it is not going to be this massive fluffy loaf that you're used to seeing when you use white flour or wheat flour. So you are going to have a tiny loaf. That's why usually when I am making coconut bread, I usually always make buns out of it. Otherwise, you're going to have bread that's only about four inches tall, which is fine if you don't want a big sandwich and it tastes great still but I'm just giving you a heads up that it is not going to be a big loaf of bread. Once it is baked, remove it from the oven. It still will be a little bit soft, but it will firm up as it cools. 
Allow it to cool in the pan for about 25 to 30 minutes or until it's firm enough to transfer to a wire rack without it falling apart. After it's set for 25 to 30 minutes, grasp the parchment paper handles and lift your bread out, transfer it to a wire rack, and allow it to cool completely before you slice it. Make sure it is cooled completely. Gluten-free baked goods are always very fragile when they have any amount of heat in them. So if you try to cut into it when it's warm, it can fall apart on you. So make sure you allow it to cool completely before you cut it. Once it's cooled completely, slice your desired size piece. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to three days, or you can store them in the refrigerator for up to five days, or you can do what I do and store them in an airtight container in your freezer for up to one month. If you do choose to freeze the bread, make sure you slice it into your desired slices before you put it in the freezer, and then just place, pe place pieces of parchment paper or wax paper in between each slice then put it in a, in a freezer safe Ziploc bag or an airtight container and freeze it that way. That way you can just take out however many pieces you want and not have to remove a whole loaf and try to defrost it because once it's defrosted, you can't refreeze it. And eat and enjoy. And those are our recipes of the day. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.